and thank you for checking out Prairie View Wealth Partners website. I appreciate you taking the time and looking into who we are, trying to understand how we do business and how we're different from most other financial advisors. Thank you also for signing up for this free email. Uh, here we're going to talk about the 10 things that you should be looking for in a financial advisor. Now, I realize that if you're on our site, if you've been nosing around and if you've been checking us out a little bit, you're probably in the market looking for a good financial advisor. Probably thinking to yourself, how would I make that decision? Uh, maybe you've had an experience before. Maybe you know what you don't like. Uh, maybe you've never done it and you're new to this experience. What we would suggest is take your time, understand who you're doing business with, and look for these 10 items. The first question to ask is, is your financial advisor a fiduciary? That's a word that you'll probably hear frequently as you're looking at different sites, as you're talking to different advisors. Something you probably have heard in the media. What it means to be a fiduciary is that your advisor has to put your interests above all else, above their own interests, above how they get paid. Uh, your interests have to be first and foremost. Uh, there are different advisors that operate under different agreements or different uh, requirements. A fiduciary is one that we would suggest that you look for. We happen to be fiduciaries here at Prairie View, uh, and we'll always put your interests first. The second thing is really an internal thing. Ask yourself, can I trust this person? Is this somebody that when they give me advice, I feel like I can listen to and I would be thankful for it uh, and willing to act on it? If you feel as though you're going to be second guessing what advice is given, or if you feel like you can't really trust it all the way, then that's probably not a good fit because financial advice means nothing if you're not able to act on it. So ask yourself, is this an individual or is this a firm that I think I can trust? Third, ask yourself, do we have an understanding? Do I understand them when they talk to me? Meaning, you know, are they using a bunch of jargon they don't really get? Are they talking over my head? Are they talking beneath me? Uh, make sure that you're connecting on, this, on the right level there. You need to understand what's going on with your financial situation. And just because somebody is very smart, if they can't explain it to you in a way that you understand, it might not be a good fit. But in addition to that, make sure that they understand you. When you talk to them and you explain to them what you're looking for, you explain to them what your goals are and your dreams are, do they truly connect with that? Uh, and are you guys on the same page? Understanding is one of the first things that you need before you can have a good, solid relationship. Fourth, think about your values. You bring a set of core values that you embody uh, that mean something to you. Your financial advisor should share what those values are. Now, you don't have to be in perfect alignment, but generally speaking, you have to have some uh, shared values. Otherwise, what will end up happening is you run the risk of your advisor giving you advice that could go against what those values are that you hold. Uh, so just ask yourself, does it seem as though we have some shared values and that our shared values are close enough that we can connect uh, and he can, that person can give me good advice going forward? Fifth, look for credentials. Any advisor can uh, get licensed with the state or with the uh, federal government through FINRA, and they can hold themselves out as a financial advisor. Credentials, however, re represent the extra education that individual has gone through so that they can hold themselves out as a professional, and they can really serve you in a much deeper and much more meaningful way. So look for credentials. Primarily, we would suggest that you look for credentials such as certified financial planner, certified public accountant, uh, CFA, Certified uh, Financial Advisor, those types of designations. Sixth, take a look and see what the regulators have to say about them. Uh, if you look out, if they hold a securities license, you can look at uh, Broker Check, and Broker Check will give you a background as to has that advisor ever been in any sort of regulatory issues. Uh, you can continue to look also at other regulatory agencies. Look at reviews. Uh, make sure that that advisor is somebody that has a upstanding track record and a, a good, honest uh, dealings in their past. Seventh, consider how they get paid. Uh, advisors can get paid in a number of ways, none of which are inherently wrong, but you have to think about what their motivations are and do those motivations align with what you're trying to do. So let me share with you what I mean by that. There are some advisors that will receive a commission if you purchase a product with them. The nice thing about receiving a commission is that you as the consumer are not writing an extra check to compensate the advisor. Also, what's nice with that is the advisor is motivated to make sure that you're taking action. Again, as we mentioned earlier, if you're just getting advice but taking no action, that's really not in your best interest. You've wasted a lot of time and energy. 
So it's good that you can have somebody motivated to help you take action and it doesn't cost you an extra check for you to compensate that advisor. The downside is that the advisor might be motivated from a financial perspective to have you make a decision that makes them the most money. Just something to be careful of, not something that always happens, but something to be cautious of. Other times advisors will get paid based upon you investing your dollars with them. If you invest your assets with that advisor and they're managing those investments for you, many times they'll receive a management fee for doing that. In that relationship, the benefit is that usually those, those fees are based on a percentage of your portfolio. So as a percentage of your portfolio, you and your advisor's financial interests are perfectly in alignment. The more your portfolio grows, the happier you are. And the more your portfolio grows, the more your advisor makes because the percentage on a bigger number means they have more, more income. So financially, you're, you're in perfect alignment. The downside to that relationship is the fact that you're paying a fee. Uh, so that could have a drag on overall performance. Now, in a perfect world, your advisor will bring to you more value than what the fee is that they are charging. And that's what should happen. Uh, so in the long term, that fee that you're paying should really not be an issue, but just know that it can uh, add to, to drag, if you will, on your portfolio if the advisor does not perform. The third way that advisors can get paid is you can write them a check for their time or for their expertise. In that scenario, most of the time we're talking about developing a financial plan where it's not really talking about product specific types of advice. We're not talking about investments, we're not talking about insurance. We're really just putting together a financial plan for you that you can follow as a roadmap to get to financial success. Now in that arrangement, the good part is that your advisor is 100% your fiduciary. They are giving you advice based purely on what you need. That's a benefit. The downside is, again, back to if we don't implement that, it doesn't really do you much good. So in our opinion, the perfect relationship that we think is there is when you understand exactly which, how your advisor gets paid, you understand the pros and cons to that, and you're comfortable with moving forward. In our practice, we think that all three of those should be employed. So for example, we have clients that will pay us a fee to put together a financial plan. In that case, we act completely as their fiduciary, making recommendations to them on a comprehensive basis. If they choose to have us manage their portfolio, there are times when we charge a management fee for managing that money. But also, if there are other products that are appropriate for them, we may help them purchase, say, a life insurance policy or an annuity policy, uh, where there might be some sort of a commission-based income as well. The reason for that is we believe that the advice is key, but taking action on that advice is where it really matters. And if we can do a good job of helping you take the right action, then how everybody gets paid is really kind of mute because you are in the place that you need to be in and your advisor is still in business as well. So just know how do they get paid, no right or wrong answer there, but understand it and know that you're in agreement with how that happens. Number eight, think about their technology. From a technology standpoint, today, things should be extremely easy for you to navigate. Uh, I like to think of technology as something that can be a tool. There are times when that technology can be overwhelming and can be intimidating. If that's the case with your advisor, probably not a good fit. You need to be comfortable enough with the technology that you can get full benefit out of it without being intimidated. Secondly, the technology can also be a sign of where your advisor is at in their career path. An advising firm that is not tech savvy has probably left, the, the industry has left them behind and they're probably not cutting edge. On the flip side, an advising firm that is too tech heavy, it can be cumbersome to help to try to do business with them and sometimes the tech can get in the way. So you wanna look at the technology piece, know that it's the right fit for you and know that you're comfortable regardless of your level of technology uh, preference, if you will, that you're comfortable being able to interact with your advisor in the way in which you want to. Number nine, think about whether you're talking to a single advisor or you're talking to a team of people. In this world, it is far too easy, as we've seen here recently, for things to change in a heartbeat. When that happens, you do not want to have all of your financial picture reliant upon one individual. 
you never know. I'd like to think about it. You know, if I'm ever out and get hit by a beer truck, uh, I don't want my clients or my family to be in the lurch wondering what do we do now. Tim handled everything for us. Now, being the founding member of Prairie View, uh, this place is really important to me. However, it cannot be only me. We have to have a team approach because not only do I not have all the knowledge that I need to have, we need team members that can bring their expertise to the, to the party. But in addition to that, we need to have a continuity plan. We need to know that if I'm on vacation, uh, like I said, if I get hit by the beer truck or, uh, or anything like that, you need to know that there's continuity. The team is there to take, take advantage of uh, whatever we need to if that, uh, if that should happen. And you need to know that your plan doesn't change. There is comfort in knowing that we are here to help you regardless of what happens. And as I mentioned, that the continuity is there. It's not just a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And finally, we would, we would ask you to say it for number 10, is this a firm that you could see working with for a long period of time? If it is, then it's probably an indication that you're in the right direction. If it's not, you probably should not try to do business with them. When you look for a financial advisor, you are not looking for a financial advisor for a short period of time. This is not a one and done. It's not a let's meet together for the next year and then we're, we're over this. This is a lifelong commitment. And now, don't get me wrong, it's not like you get married or anything like that. It's, it's easy enough to change advisors. However, if you're going into that relationship thinking, I don't really like this company. I don't really like the way that they're doing things. I don't look forward to those meetings. Uh, maybe you're thinking, I don't see us lasting much more than a, a year or, you know, we'll get through this, but then we'll find somebody else. Go to another advisor. There are plenty of advisors out there, plenty of firms that can help you and be very competent in doing that. And so find one that you feel like you can work with over the long term. Thank you again for subscribing to this, this download. Thank you also for checking out our website. If you have questions, by all means, shoot us an email, uh, info at pv-wp.com. Give us a call, 708-326-4750. We look forward to working with you in the future and wish you well.